Everybody zoo is EMG important with another auction block. Pretty exciting because this will be the last auction block that uh, we do not have Cam here. Cam, the new employee. Yes, and you should be uh, hearing from him soon. So this will be the last one. So next week that we have this actually on here on next Sunday, he should be here and uh, we should be flowing through all those graded gem orders and getting them all back to you, uh, which is really, really exciting. And then once we can finally get caught up with that, and actually, uh, you know, get to a point where it's like, hey, have no more, uh, you know, as they come in, we'll send them back. But then we can just focus on this consignment stuff. It's going to be really exciting. Bring some new content to you guys. Uh, for this week, I had 300, over 350, about 380 something items. But that also includes cancellations from last week. So it's like 350 maybe, uh, which is pretty, that's pretty large. I actually didn't put any of my cards in this auction, not because I didn't want to sell them. It's because once it gets to like 300-ish, that becomes enough work where it's like, okay, I, I I need to put most of my focus on Great a Gem, getting your guys' cards back. And once it gets over that kind of mark, it's like, okay, it becomes a, a lot of work, a lot of late nights. So I didn't put any of my cards this week, but if we have a slow week next week, I'll start putting those back in and you can, you know, check them out. I never did a PSA graded return on those or really any returns just because I don't have time. But maybe uh, if we do get caught up and I do get, uh, because I have about 1,200 cards still left of PSA, I'll show you guys those. Anyway... Let's get into this. Uh, a lot of items. Two people have, one guy had about, uh, Paul, the MVP, had about 60-ish, maybe, cars. And then uh, Uriel had about 200. So two guys had a bunch here. So we're going to get through the uh, smaller submissions here first. We can check them out. Once again, if you guys have any interest, you can email me at zngemporium at gmail.com. But here we go. This is for Jose. He's got this EV Heroes Japanese kind of collector's box here that has these packs and this VMAX pack, as well as, let's get through what cards he has, Charmander PSA 10, First Edition Jungle, PSA, or First Edition Jungle, called Fable 8, Muck. Nobody likes Muck, sorry Jose, nobody uh, nobody appreciates Muck, so we're just going to skip over him real quick. Everybody appreciates the Charizard though, you know, Big Bad Char Bar, that hollow actually looks, well, actually looks pretty nice, must be the back is kind of crap. Well, the back looks pretty nice, too. Jose, this is a pretty, uh, boy, this is a pretty strong-looking five. There must be kind of like a crease. There must be a crease or something that I'm not, uh, that I'm not really seeing. Now, let me just check this. Okay, now I'm interested. Now I'm interested in what is wrong. Okay, I think I see. You see this? It's like a little binder ding, maybe, there. Uh, that must be it. That must be why I got the five. Otherwise, that's a really strong card. Sorry, guys, I know I have 300 and, uh, you know, 50-something items to go through, but I just wanted to uh, I had to focus on that one just because, it's like, you know, you got to stop at a char bar, you know, whenever you get through, especially that one. Here's a mint Hitmonlee from Fossil. Oh, here's this Charizard VMAX that everybody and their uncle and their wife and their children and their great-grandchildren submitted. But uh, there you go. There's another one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, pretty exciting. We have all these cards. Thank you to everybody who submitted. It really uh, helps grow the actual, uh, yeah, here's a really nice card, grows the business uh, as well as, uh, you know, that was, as I said in my video on January 1st, it really uh, actually was the catalyst to be able to hire on someone to actually get through these graded gem and get caught up instead of me trying to do both at the same time and I would have hired there are some people on those videos said oh you know you should have hired earlier and I would have hired early you know I uh we had talked to Cam about October and flew him out in November and I offered him to it to him then but uh obviously when it's uprooting your whole life uh you know move across states you know it's not something you could just you know a flip of a switch so you know that was uh it's been in the works for a while all right so next we have Bauer Bauer has some items here. He has three. These are all art sets. It's just in the original, uh, or what he sent it to me right here as an art set. So there is four, three art sets, as well as a tag team All-Stars GX. Very nice Japanese booster box. I believe it has, is it 10? I believe it might have 10. Is that 10 packs in those? I do believe. All right. And next we have Ben B. Ben, thank you for submitting. He's Seems to submit just a handful of cards every single week, which is very appreciated. Gengar, 9, Alakazam, Expedition, 9. Mm, that is a nice card. E-Series, always uh, 
underrepresented, but uh, you know, I think one day they'll get their due. There is a Mint 9 Cloister. Very nice. Expedition is the one booster box that I've never opened. Uh, you know, we've broken open a whole lot of cards on this channel, a whole lot of boxes on this channel. Uh, you know, base set, Jungle Fossil, Team Rocket, base set two. We've done the, both the gyms. We've done all four Neos. We've done Sky Ridge. We've done Aquapolis, but we've just never done Expedition. Just never, uh, never came through. Nobody ever wanted to sell it or, uh, you know, to me. All right, so we have Luke. We have a Labyrinth of Nightmare Gem Mint 10 first edition pack as well as a PSA graded Crimson Crisis first edition PSA 10 graded pack. And these are the new the new slabs as well. You know, once I'm as I'm recording this, you know, that first edition case, Logan Paul is apparently opening to see if it's real. You know, the same guy who actually uh, and this one is for Josh. We have a Sun and Moon uh, booster box. This is one of those that it looked a little fishy, the packs, uh, and I opened one of his boxes and it was totally legit. So he had a few more, so here's one more that is being put on the auction block for today. But as recording this, nothing to know about that. You know, some people think it's fake, some people still think it's real. Um, but uh, yeah, the person who actually authenticated and wrapped that sealed case is the same person who does those graded packs. So, you know, there are some people that say, oh, that might hurt his reputation and you know he's just you know if he's if he's authenticating that how do we know that the packs are good uh in my opinion the packs you know uh, i don't know they're just there just aren't many people resealing those uh packs and sending them to get graded i just don't think i think if someone's resealing it to get the the grading cost to get that pack graded right and the risk you are running if he looks at it and sees some glue is just not if they are a scammer they're probably just selling it you know loose on ebay that's probably what they're doing um now have they shown that they have graded resealed packs yes they have but uh you know the cost and time and everything that goes into it and the risk and i just think that most of the scam resealed packs are probably are probably sold as loose that's just probably my opinion but there are probably some that uh, are on that, but it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Anyway, we have Allie. So these two, uh, these two are uh, relists, but I just want to show them because they are higher end items. A lot of times I don't show relisting except, uh, unless they're like higher end items or someone had a, quite a few that were relisted. But this one is uh, relisted, the person bit up and just totally ignored, banned, you know. And this was a Metagross uh, Mint 9. Look at that, 9.99 and a 9.5 for edges for the Metagross 9. So we're going to relist that as well as some new fresh booster packs. We have two Team Rocket. We have four of the Gym Challenge, an art set. And then we have another art set of the Gym Heroes. And then finally, last but certainly not least, we have a Blastoise from base set. So thank you to Allie. And I believe he's sending a few more cards graded cards to get uh to show for you guys and we're gonna do a little experiment you know we have seen you know we have seen so here are some more i believe mike mike had some he had quite a few he was on unlucky one he had quite a few you know, he had quite a few that he submitted but he did have these that were relisted but so i just want to show them because there are a few uh ali we're going to be doing i call we had a you know about an hour call yesterday and uh we're going to do a little experiment because you guys know how many high-end cards that Allie has and submitted through CGC. Those are all those gold stars that you've seen, the Charizards, right, so the uh, first edition, Shinings. And uh, we're going to do a little experiment and try to cross-grade it to PSA. Some of those, we have about five cards, five to ten cards that we're going to experiment with, you know, like uh, Gold Star Charizard, um, like Gold Star Pikachu, Gold Star... Uh, uh, what is it? Gold Star Mewtwo, I believe. Is that what it is? I don't know. There's uh, great stuff, okay? And we're going to attempt. We're going to see what uh, what happens. Because there are a lot of people that say, hey, CGC goes for a decent amount less and people can just buy them and cross-grade them. Well, we might be doing that experiment for you guys. And uh, So stay, stay tuned for that. Okay. Noel, you have three items. You have this Mew, which is extremely expensive. It was a hollow. I'm sure it's still... Pretty decent price as a gem at 10 as a non holo Very nice card. And we have another from Expedition, the Alakazam and PSA 10 non holo 
and then we have just a loose first edition it's still in the wrapping that was uh, sent to me so I just kept it in there but first edition team rocket pack so there we go and there's you know I might change my policy down the road I don't know on those loose packs there are people that say why don't you just can I get the weights but uh, you know if I send those weights and one is a heavier weight and I, I put the weight people's like oh well it, it's not this weight, you know, because, uh, you know, I live at 7,000 feet. I live way up in the mountains. That difference in uh, uh, the, um, what is it called? Uh, the difference in the elevation can cause differences in the scale. And if it's like a heavy weight and they weigh it and they're like, oh, well, I didn't get a hollow. I want a refund. And that's a whole thing. And I just, you know, just someone returning, if something's like a heavy, let's say, let's say that heavy, let's say that Team Rocket pack is heavy, um, you know, it's like 21 point, let's say 21.1 or something. And someone opens it and they get a not hollow and they want a refund. And then that pack sold for, let's say, $400, $500. Well, that's something that the consigner doesn't have to worry about. That's something that I would have to eat. I would have to literally take a loss of $500 because who knows what eBay would side with in that point. That's something that's really, I could definitely, I've seen cases where eBay will 100% side with the buyer in that case because it shows heavy and they're going to make their argument. Uh, and that would just completely destroy a, an absolute ton of items and get signed at $500. Because this is just, you know, this is not a huge, you know, a lot of these cards, you know, make maybe a dollar or $2 uh, on a card. So to take a $500 loss, it's just, I just can't do that. So maybe in the future, I'll s test the waters on that. But at this time, I'm just going to send them as, hey, it's just a loose pack you know it, will it be light i don't know but i would just assume that it might be but uh you know we've seen alley's car uh, packs you know there are been people that have said they have pulled hollows from them and uh just from his story i know they probably are in weight but other one that's just you know that's the reason why some people want the weights but i just at this time it's just not something that i'm going to do but in the future Things can change, so we will see. All right, Misty's Determination from Evolution. This is for uh, Juan. Misty's Determination, PSA 10. We have a Raikou, PSA 8, Gold Star. Very nice. We've seen quite a few of those legendary dogs. Then we have CGC, a, a uh, Shadowless Venusaur, 8.5, 8.5, 8, and a 7.5 on the surface. And then a Gold Star Pikachu. This one does not have subgrades. What do you guys think on that? Would you rather have subgrades or not? I'm sure some of you some might say you might have, rather have subgrades, but as a seller, if I was grading with CGC, I would not put subgrades on there. Why? Because if someone sees this and they see a mint eight, okay, and there's nothing on there, I'm going to bet they're going to pay more for that card than if it showed subgrades and says, oh, service 7.5, eh, that's probably closer to a seven because there's probably a little decent amount of scratches on there. If you're a seller, you probably would rather just not do that because you're probably going to get a little bit more. Now, if you have a really, really strong card, and you have, instead of that seven, Surface 7.5, it says a Surface 9, uh, well, then you're probably going to get, I don't know. It's weird. I CGC, I've never never submitted to CGC. Uh, I, I, I don't see a world where I ever will. Uh, but, you know, there we go. Uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver. This is a Spanish Heart Gold Soul Silver. At least I... Pretty sure it is. Juego de Cartes Coleccionable. Very nice. That's it. And that means, I think Juego means playing or playing cards. Collectible playing cards. I don't know. That's, I took four years of sp Spanish in high school, but high school was a long, long time ago. Evolutions Box. We always like Evolutions Box. I think I've sold maybe three or four of those uh, on the auctions. They all have went for about $700, so... That seems to be about the price that those are nowadays. And then a Victini uh, black and white tin. Now that's a pretty uh, pretty old tin at this point. What is this, 2011? I believe, yeah, 2011. Whew, 12, or 11 years old at this point. That is, uh, that is pretty crazy. Okay, so Juan, those are yours. Well, let's put this over here. Gently, you gotta be a little more gentle, gentle with uh, sealed stuff, just so you don't break the actual uh, seal or scratch it or whatnot. All right, let's put this over here. All right, Sean, this is also a relist, but just be a little higher, a little higher end item, over five hundred dollars. Just want to show it. He sold 
uh, an art set of black triangles and some unlimited packs, but this one had to be relisted. So there it is if you want a black triangle error right there. Charizard Mint 9. There you go. And this is the older case. So you can, uh, as you can tell, because it has the prongs on the back. But uh, there we go. And then Richard. You get a few new items and a few relist, or like maybe like two relists, but then other new items. These are it for uh, Richard. So he has a few of these. We have an Alakazam 7, Dark Charmeleon, and then we have the final French first edition Squirtle. He had like. What do you have, like five, six, seven of those in PSA 10? They've all sold for like between $200 to $300 in PSA 10. So this is be the final one. And then for you guys who have French first edition Squirtles who are like, why are you flooding the market? Well, guess what? We are done after that. No more first edition French Squirtles. Austin, we have Austin, which is our, uh, you know, he had submitted quite a few of these Darkness and Blaze cards in PSA 10. We've gotten them back. We've sold off a handful every single week. This is this week's edition uh, of these. These are about the same. You'll probably see these. If you have watched these videos and all the way through, you probably have seen these cards uh, multiple times. He just had duplicates of these, and we're just selling them through every week. So there you go for Austin. And then Frank, <laughs> I laugh because... You know, I call Frank Frank the Tank, but he's sending his messages. He's like, you know what? I don't want to be Frank the Tank. I want to be Frank the Man. So guess what? Frank the Man, there you go. We're calling you Frank the Man from now on. F-T-M. Fit him. Good old Frank the Man. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, here's what you have for a first edition PSA 10 Pokeball from Jungle. Here we go, a Spiro from Jungle. Now we have a nice a Blaine's Arcanine from Gym 2. I actually have a, I know some guy who has a, quite a few Japanese booster boxes, including Gym 2. I'm thinking about maybe buying his Gym 2, or I mean trading for his Gym 2. I don't really buy anything if I can trade for it. Um, I do have some first edition heavy base set packs. You know, might be looking at that. I only have three of those left. Uh, keeping, I'm keeping one that's really kind of iffy. Uh, one that I didn't break from a box or didn't know it was from box break. The other ones, I know the lights in the box and the heavy, so I'm very confident on those. This one was just a random pack. I might open that. Maybe I'll open that one when we reach a certain subscriber amount or when uh, we can get through Greater Gem. We're like just completely done. It's just like a celebration, right? <laughs> Yeah, that has been uh, quite quite the ordeal. All right, Frank. The last one. Frank wanted to show this one. He said put a hollow bleed. But uh, Frank the man, I don't think I can actually put hollow bleed in the actual title. Uh, he's like, if you can, put it. But I don't really see what... Because there's no like double hollow on the actual card. And if you're talking about these, these like little dots in the hollow... That's just what Japanese cards did back then. I mean, that's just like normal. Like, if you look at this, if you look at the Magneton, I mean, look, you can see all those dots as well. I mean, that just that just happened on the hollows on Japanese stuff. So I don't think you can put... But, you know, the scan will show that. So, yeah, there you go. That's just something where... You know, sometimes people request stuff to put, you know, if possible with certain things. And some of them it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And some of the stuff, it's like, mm, I don't really think I could sell it as that because I don't think that's something that's abnormal for that. Because I've seen that. I mean, that's just that's just really normal at that point. But, you know, we have high-res scans, so we can show that, you know, if people uh, think it's a little bit more than this or, uh, you know, usual. So, Paul, a.k.a. MVP, he has quite a few here as well he has sent in quite a few he's usually a cgc kind of uh ex era so if you're looking for ex era stuff um that's kind of his uh, specialty it seems and he has has some sgc stuff here as well so we're going to go through this team rocker returns r energy nine so here's some diamond and pearl stuff majestic dawn celia hirayama from ex ruby sapphire I like Paul's stuff. This is not stuff you, uh, you know, you usually see modern stuff, Watsy stuff. You'll see a handful of this kind of stuff. But this stuff in, you know, mint, mint plus, gem mint condition is uh, really cool to see. So here's the EX Unseen Forces Electabuzz. Lauren would like that. Ursa Ring, Jinx, right there. Smoochum, 
and 9.5 from EX Unseen Forces again. Here is an Arceus Level X Salamence, 9.5. This in PSA 10, I believe I sold for, boy, I don't even know. I think it was four figures. I think it was over $1,000. I can't remember this one. We sold so many of those in PSA 10. Here's a 9.5. That probably is going to go for a decent amount. A reverse foil Umbreon 9.5 EX Delta species. Very nice. And this one probably as well. This is EX here. It's a Rayquaza. We have the Eevee in 9.5. So as you can see, this is not stuff you really see too often. There are, you know, there are arguments. There are people that are arguing forever. Here's a Hollow Blastoise. That's like, oh, well... You don't see it very often because people aren't really interested, blah, blah, blah. And then there are people that say, oh, yeah, they are really interested, but they're just not very, they're just not very, uh, they're low pop. Not many, there's not much stuff out there. It'll be interesting in like uh, 10 years to see who was right on that. Was was there just no, not much demand for this stuff? So that's why there's not much of this stuff graded. Or is it just truly, uh, you know, Pokemon just didn't really print a ton of it compared to, I mean, for sure, there was a whole lot less of this printed than like, you know, jungle, base, and fossil. I mean, there just has to be. But um, how much less, who knows? We're not uh, we're not too sure. So here we're going to get into some CGC cards. There is the Prime uh, Electrode. People love or hate Primes. Electabuzz, this is the reprint Secret Rare and Platinum. Lauren would like that. There's the bag on. There's a shiny, the SH10. We have some Expedition non hollow EX Deoxys. Of course, extremely expensive box and uh, packed by. That is one of those. I mean, if we're talking about this EX era, you know, here's EX Dragon. I'm trying to think, did we ever. Okay, so we opened an EX Fire Red Leaf Green box. I remember I broke open, you know, sold on weight packs from that. But except for that, I'm trying to think if I ever broke open any other EXD. I mean, we had talked about Expedition. That is the one Watsy set that didn't break open. But I'm thinking except for EX Fire Red Leaf Green, that was literally the only EX box that I broke open. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to think. Right. I mean, I opened more uh, Diamond and Pearl, right? We did the, the Arceus. Did we do another one? I'm trying to think. Yeah, just except for Watsy, I mean, there's just not, I just haven't gotten offered to buy. I mean, like, you know, especially in, let's say, 2020 when I was breaking up boxes and selling them with packs and people were reaching out to me. I mean, everybody had a Team Rocket box. Everybody had a Fossil box. You know, there's a nice one, Dragonite EX, EX Dragon. Um, you know, there are a ton of people that had you know, gyms, and then the, the base set, the jungle, and then you get occasionally a person or two that might have a, a, a Neo, you know, which I always liked that. And then you get the very, very rare person who would have an Aquapolis or a Skyridge. I think we broke open two or three Skyridge boxes and two Aquapolis boxes. Uh, but this, this stuff, EX um, and Diamond and Pearl, Nobody ever reached out about those. I mean, they just didn't. And maybe that's just me. Maybe if I was, like, posting on Instagram and posted only YouTube videos about Diamond and Pearl era stuff and uh, EX era stuff, uh, that would have reached people who would search for that in search, and they would see that, and they would have reached out to me, and, you know, we could have broken open boxes of those. But... Um, if that's the case, then that's the reason why. But if it's not the case, you know, you'd think there'd still be the people who would like that, would watch other stuff, but just uh, just never really happened. So I don't know. Take take that information as you will. Okay. Uriel. So he has uh, a ton. A ton of this stuff. He's got like almost 200 of these. Now, a lot of this stuff is there are quite a few duplicates in here. And a lot of it, I will say, is like Team Rocket first edition uh, non-hollows and hollows. Um, well, actually, just like non-hollows. There, there are very few hollows in all these 200s. So um, that's why I'm saving it for the end because this is just this will be just kind of a you know market talk while we're going through this because it's not you know these aren't uh, you know thousand dollar items but it's nice you know it's nice pickup for anybody who's looking for these and uh, you know at auction you can not do it for a maybe an overinflated buy it now price so 
we're going to go through these and uh, you can guys can look at them or you can just listen to uh, what's going on in uh, what's going on in in my life but we'll just go through these um, just and have a little have a little talk so let me just put this you know sticky note on there so well I, I know it's his just because it's very uh, you know unique so as you can see there are quite a few team rocket uh, first edition non hollows probably a complete probably just pulled all these from a set he had because they're all in mint nine or you know near mint to mint eight a few tens in there so he's probably just uh, at that time you know this stuff was pretty inflated if if i'm just you know walking in his shoes and he's like wow this stuff is literally free you know cost of the cost of goods sold is is free which is what a lot of people did in that time, uh, you know, er, mid 2020 when stuff was rising, and especially late 2020. It's like, you know, when you guys are, you know, buying and selling this stuff. I'm trying to see. It's kind of interesting. Hold on. Yeah, there's like a. These are both mint nine, but this one has like a weird. Is that like a factory error? Like weird smudge. And this one, of course, it doesn't have that. That's interesting. There you go. Sometimes you don't. Uh, you notice new things every time you see it but um you know at that time a lot of stuff you're flipping stuff it's like hey i want to buy a chilling rain booster box or uh i want to buy a vivid voltage because it's falling so much or i want to buy you know a bunch of uh pikachu or greninja gold star promos and then i want to you know when grading get costs get low i'm gonna send them in and then flip them um you can flip almost anything in Pokemon, okay? The, 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 the biggest factor, the absolute biggest factor is in condition. Uh, you know, it isn't what you sell it for. It's what you buy it for. That is that is literally the most important thing when flipping an item. That's not just Pokemon. You can do that with video games like I've done. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just video games that are sitting on eBay that's like, hey, I want that. But it's just, it's the, the cost point is too high. It's too high, Okay. And I'll find someone who will list something, buy it now, and it's listed pretty low, and that's when I buy it. Um, and a lot of this stuff that you're seeing here especially, which I'm just putting myself in uh, Uriel's shoes, maybe I'm completely off base, but here's what my thought process is, probably what happened. Um, here, let me just, I just want to just put them all in, uh, you know, in uh, over there so I don't overcrowd this, but... Um, you know, we probably saw that the price of these and, you know, PSA, you know, 8, 9, 10 were like literally probably 20, 50, 100 plus dollars, especially, you know, we're talking about PSA 10 and the 100 plus dollar. And it's like, okay, hold on a second. Probably went to his binder or went to his closet, you know, and saw these literally just sitting there and had been sitting there for probably a while. And then remember, I mean, this set came out in 2000. I mean, we're talking 22 years ago at this point. And it was probably sitting there basically worthless. I mean, basically at the time, you know, you could sell these at bulk for what, like three cents? We're talking, guys, three cents a piece that you could like turn these into someone who wants to buy bulk. So now all of a sudden your three cents is worth, you know, uh, 20, 50 bucks. Okay. And it's like, holy, you know, if you bought a, if you bought a penny stock at three cents and it was worth $5, I mean, you are just absolutely, you're like, you're like over the moon here. So, you know, granted, you know, the cost base is a zero, but you still got to get them graded. But at the time when you're submitting these, I mean, these are probably what, eight, nine dollars to submit these. So each of these, you know, let's say, you know, you look at this and you're like, okay, well, I could sell this card for, I mean, here's a good example. I mean, this in PSA 9. I mean, this is what, probably a, a 20 to 30 something dollar card, right? Isn't it? In PSA 9, in PSA 10, it's worth close to 100 bucks. So you have your cost of zero for the card, and then you have the grading cost of, you know, what, like eight, nine bucks. I mean, <laughs> your three cents per card has now turned into, after selling it, after the grading fees, you know, your three cents has turned into, you know, potentially, if you got a PSA 10, you know, probably like, after fees seventy dollars from three cents to seventy dollars even if you get a psa eight you're you're still 
you're still making from three cents, you're turning into probably, I don't know, 10 bucks. I mean, it's just, it was insane. It's, I mean, it's, it's literally insane. So uh, that's what a ton of people did. I mean, that's what a ton, I mean, you, you've seen the graded gem. Uh, let me talk about it and why I literally had to hire somebody to uh, just do that full time along with me doing that as well. Um, there's just a whole lot of these out there. And there's a whole lot of them still left to come back. I mean, I have uh, probably my uh, December submission. December. Yeah, I sent in a December submission of 500 cards. And there are some cards in there that I would never have thought about <laughs> submitting. And, uh, you know, at the time, I mean, they've gone down in price, but they're still literally... I have a cost basis of like zero, except for the grading fees, so uh, which is less than ten dollars. So I sent uh, what like thirty of those Charmanders first edition Team Rocket. Uh, I sent like fifty Squirtle first edition Team Rocket. And guys, when I sent that in, when I sent in like the Squirtle, I was like, should I send these in or not? It's like, am I a moron? Um, and I sent them in. It's literally it cost me like eight dollars, right? Because I had zero into the actual, uh, you know, common first edition Team Rocket Squirtle. And at the time, a PSA 10 of that was $300, $300. Now I think, I think it's still around 100 for Squirtle first edition, which is still pretty, uh, pretty insane. So I sent it, let's say I sent in those 50 Squirtles, right? Uh, Let's say it cost me like $8, you know, eight, eight times 50. Boy, I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's pretty insane. So not, they definitely have calmed down in price, but still, even if I got all PSA eights, it still was worth way more than the you know three, four, five cents per card that I would have gotten before. So this is just a weird time in Pokemon that a lot of people sent. I mean, you're seeing all these cards that are sending. A lot of people did this. Okay, a lot of people did this. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where these actually settle. Because, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, they still, like, even though people say, oh, prices have crashed, prices have crashed, and, you know, like a Squirtle is from, went from $300 to $100, but, you know, a year before that, you know, that, that card in PSA 10 would have been worth, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, $15, <laughs> so, uh, there's either a lot of room to go down. Oh, look at that. Talking about him. Here he is. There's Squirtle. Uh, talking about that, there's either a lot of room to work down. Here's a hollow. We don't see many of those in here in Uriel's and Neogenesis. Um, so there's either a lot of room to work down, or, or these are all being absorbed still. And, uh, you know, there's going to come a time where there is going to be a floor. And we're going to actually see where the demand spiked up because, you know, the, the the price did spike up, right? Because there was a limited supply and there was a whole lot of supply. But if it gets to a point where we see a floor, let's say that first edition PSA 10 squirrel set up went from 300 to 100 now. Um, I mean, let's say it settles it $50, okay? Now there's some people that say, oh, this is the lowest price. It's not going to go below 100, you know, and it's going to go up from there. I, I disagree, but hey. Um, I, I've seen, I would have never thought in my wildest dreams it would have been worth 300 so, you know, or a Pikachu first edition jungle going for 800 Remember, I sold like 10 of those at 800 which is absolutely uh, unbelievable. But, uh, you know, what? let's say it settles at 50 bucks. Now, that is pretty, that, that gives you a really, really strong, it, we're going to get to see a lot of price points when we actually see these things settle. To where it's like, it's going to give us a lot of uh, data as to how much, how many collectors entered and didn't leave because if if that psa 10 goes to 50 and then that just kind of bottoms at 50 and and it kind of trickles up from there and that goes to 52 and 55 and then it's a 60 dollars card um the amount of supply that came into it and to be supported by that means that um you know that huge craze that happened in 2020 really was there are some people that think it's was detrimental to pokemon because it created a lot of hype and there was a lot of it was spiked up and a lot of people got burned but if we can get to a point where all these things bottom and it's still a decent amount higher than it was before that's going to tell you that oops that's going to tell you that hey hold on there's so there's so many stacks here let's make sure 
I'm going to have to uh, refund uh, Uriel if any of these are uh, actually cracked. Yeah, these, no, these are actually, these are fine. These are pretty strong cases. I mean, to get cracked, they're going to have to be kind of run over by the uh, UPS truck, which I have had a few cracked cases. I'm actually now, instead of uh, a bubble pouch and bubble mailer and bubble wrap, I'm going to put another bubble wrap over it to kind of, oh, there's a PSA 10 squirrel, just like we were talking about. Uh, I'm going to do another wrap so I don't have any more cracked uh, cases, but, you know, I've, I've been selling thousands and thousands of items, and really I've only had, I think, two slightly cracked cases, but, of course, that's not something that I want to happen, so I'm going to try to uh, make that a little bit more secure on that end. But uh, here we have some of the premium file promos. But, yeah, like I said before, That'll be very interesting to see where those settle because that's going to tell you a lot about where how many people entered the hobby and stayed in it because there's no way that the amount of supply that's being sent in and the demand dropping from that time that peak uh look at that gem mint 10 meganium premium file that in english in first edition psa 10 i believe is i don't know five ten thousand dollars i mean it's a very expensive card here's the japanese missy's tears the Hanada City theme deck. This is not the actual one that comes out of the pack. You can tell because there's a no, there's no rarity symbol there. It did have a rarity symbol. It would just be from the Gym Two or a Gym One box. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be really interesting. To see where they settle. And we're, you know, we're we're in January of 2022. I would say in the next uh, th three to six months. Three to six months, probably closer to six, but I'll, I'll give PSA the benefit of the doubt. This is a French Supreme Victors. You don't see that too often. Um, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt that they can, uh, you know, absolutely still crush it. Oh, nice Cresselia mint nine. Sold a PSA ten of that. I can't remember how much. I believe it was one to two thousand dollars. So there is a nine. Um, the next three to six months, I think PSA is gonna get through that huge, huge backlog of Pokemon cards that hit in october november december january or october november december of 2020 and then to january of 2021 i think they're just going to work through all that so we're gonna get most of those modern cards back we're gonna get most of these all these kind of watsy cards back that were um you know sent in the commons and commons and non hollow stuff that really never had been graded before and now was and uh yeah we'll see where it goes and there'll be some there's a first edition ponyta It'll be interesting to see what uh, what actually goes in store for those. I'm pretty uh, pretty interested. Pretty interested to see because at that point, it's like, is it a buying opportunity, huh? Or uh, I'm not really talking about buying and selling. I'm just talking about the market as a whole. It'll be interesting to see. Anyway, we are the last of Uriel. Thank you to everybody who submitted. If you want to submit, you can email me at zngemporium at gmail.com. We can take care of everything for you. Usually payout, you know, people, I don't really talk about payouts very often, but once the Sunday's auctions end, uh, it's usually on Wednesday. I mean, I, it, it can be earlier, but usually like the latest is Wednesday because it takes people time to pay, uh, you know, and, you know, I have to get through them all and ship them all and everything. But that gives me time to really get all the spreadsheets done and get that done for you. So in a few days, um, anyway, that's all we have for today. Thank you again to everybody who submitted. And uh, yeah, next week is going to be a, a different era of uh, Z&G Emporium. So stay tuned for that.